The Last of the Wine is a 1956 historical novel by Mary Renault. The novel was considered provocative at the time for dealing explicitly with a homosexual romance, and was a great hit with the gay community of the time. The story takes place in classical age Greece, specifically, the novel is set in ancient Athens, towards the end of the Peloponnesian War with Sparta. It focuses on the character of Alexius, a young Athenian noble celebrated for both his athletic prowess as a runner and his personal beauty. The novel traces the development of his romance with an older boy, a student of Socrates named Lysis. Socrates himself also features as an important character in the novel. Alexias was born a sickly child. His mother dies giving birth to him, and his father, Myron, considers exposing him to the elements a common practice at the time, and abandoning him to fate, or rather, the fates. He is prevented from doing this by a sudden attack by the Spartans, however, the fates it seems, have decided he will live. He grows up to be a noted athlete, and a beautiful boy, and a hefe. At one point in his youth, Alexias is lectured by his father, who was once a famously desirable Ephib himself, on what sorts of suitors are appropriate for him, and which are not. He also advises Alexias on how to act within such a relationship. Alexias is soon pursued by Critias, who he suspects doesn't care for his character at all. He is the sort of man who, in Myron's words, would not care if Alexias were a dolt, a coward, or a liar. This is the sort of man Myron has warned Alexias to reject, and he does. Next, Alexias is pursued by the wealthy Charmites. Alexias is not attracted to him, though, and heeds his father's advice not to sell himself for riches or gifts. Finally, Alexias is pursued by Polymedes, who excessively flatters him, recalling yet another of his father's warnings. Alexias rejects Polymedes as well. But soon Alexius contradicts his father's teachings. Falling for Lysis, Alexius breaks protocol and woos the older man. Perhaps because there is no script for this, he doesn't do so in any formal way, but takes his cues from his teacher Socrates, who is also Lysis' teacher. This involves Alexius asking Socrates for helping in shooing away Polymedes. Socrates enlists Lysis' help on Alexius' behalf, and the two men are soon in a relationship together. Because of his youth, and despite his having been the pursuer, Alexias looks to Lysis as something of a father figure as well as a lover. In their relationship, Lysis is the Erasts, and Alexias the Araminos. In Athenian pederasty, the Erasts is not merely the lover of the Araminos, but his mentor, especially in athletics and battle, and a vital social contact. But according to tradition, the Erasts must pursue the Araminos. This flagrant breach of decorum is noted by the rest of the community. Charmides and Polymedes are both angered by it, and Polymedes aims some colorful invective at Lysis. Charmides is less direct, but in his elegant way makes it clear that the relationship between Alexias and Lysis is improper. They direct their anger only at Lysis, however, since as the heir asks he is supposed to be the responsible one. Alexias' father is married to a young woman, who gives birth to a daughter. Later, when Myron dies, he's murdered by a group of ruling Spartans called the Thirty. Alexias finds himself suddenly responsible for the woman and his little sister. He doesn't feel ready to take up mantle of head of the household, but has no choice. He soon becomes very fond of his stepmother, however. Lysis, for his part, also marries to a woman who approves of his relationship with Alexias. After his marriage, Sparta defeats Athens in the Peloponnesian War, and Lysis and Alexias head to Thebes to join Thrasybulus, who is leading an exiled force to liberate Athens from the Spartans. At the Battle of the Long Walls, Lysis is killed. Alexias marries Lysis' widow. The novel closes with a postscript. The postscript explains that the story has been found and retold by a commander of Athenian cavalry, a warrior in the service of Alexander the Great. Alexia's grandson, who bears his grandfather's name. Renault's depiction of Alexia's and Lysis' relationship, especially as set against the backdrop of classical Athens and the teachings of Socrates, is meant on one level to allegorize the teachings of Plato's Symposium. Together the men, guided by Socrates himself, move towards the goodness, beauty, and truth that Plato designates as the ultimate goal of love, and the perfection of the soul. Critics have generally lauded Renault's historical accuracy and her realistic yet tender treatment of homosexuality in ancient Greece.
I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.